friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. It's Monday, June 27th. Yesterday was 46 years that I've been married to my wife, Sue. So, my goodness, time does fly when you're having fun. <laughs> I got a few things to catch up on. Uh, last week, uh, as I mentioned, I was just beat to death with working on all that equipment and trying to get some hay put up. My wife thinks she has enough hay to make it through the winter, but I'm not 100% sure. It would have been better if things would have just worked well. But I guess that's behind me, so I can move on. So over the weekend, I thought I'd get to rest. Well, I spent most of the weekend working on her horse trailer. If you remember, some of you remember, I had started on this junk horse trailer that we bought from a lady friend of my wife's who just wanted to get rid of it. And so we gave her $500 for it, knowing full well that it really was just a scrap pile. But I did restore most of it. At least I got all the mechanical stuff working. I put in some new saddle racks, special saddle racks and things. I put the doors back on it this uh, weekend, and uh, we're going to send it off to a painter. Uh, I've just decided I don't want to deal with that final getting it ready to paint thing and let someone else do that. The painting itself is fairly easy. It's getting it ready to paint is the hard part. So we're going to send it off and have it painted, and then I'll, it'll come back, and then I still have several things I have to do to it. I have to put in a floor yet, because it does not have a floor and I have to put in uh, a couple of, I guess you'd almost call them shelves. It's in the saddle compartment. There's no roof on the saddle compartment and there's no floor in the saddle compartment. So I gotta put that in yet. And that's kind of a half round thing. Anyway, it's gonna take some work. I wish that was already in there before it's painted, but uh, you know, it is what it is. The guy's available to paint it now. I just haven't had time to work on the thing. I am sporting my most appropriate t-shirt for me. I'm here because you broke it. <laughs> May not be the most clever saying, but it is the most appropriate t-shirt for me. Because <laughs> pretty much wherever I'm at, I'm there because somebody broke something. Around here anyway. Not to mention a few things like that with instruments too. <laughs> Uh, one more thing, I've been neglecting this, and not on, not intentionally, mo partly because I forgot, partly because I was so busy last week. So those are my excuses. But Jack Rogers, uh, a viewer of the channel, he says, Hello, Batman. I'm sending you a couple of very homemade CDs. The green one is eight songs that I wrote. No copyright problems. If you have problems knowing <laughs> which one is the green one, it's the one where I'm wearing the red shirt. Sorry, I couldn't help it, he says. So he's obviously playing off of my color blindness, but I actually can tell which one is green and which one is red, and I don't know how I tell it, but I can tell this is the green one and this is the red one. Um, yeah, and this one he's wearing a red shirt. I don't know. According to all the tests, according to my eye doctors, I'm totally 100% color blind. But that's not true, because I see colors. I don't get it. I just don't understand the color blindness thing. All I know is I can't pass a color blindness test, even on my very best day. Well, anyway, Jack, thank you very kindly for the CDs. I have not yet had a chance to open them up, to be honest, because last week was, wow, I can't even explain it. And I haven't recovered fully yet. I'm still waking up at night just just yelling in pain with my hands. Now the pains have moved to the palms of my hands. I've never had that before, but now in right in the very center of my hands, I'm just, you know, just crazy amount of pain. It just is what it is. I just keep going because not one single product I've tried and I have tried, I would even say I've tried in the hundreds at this point, not one single thing. And I've tried pretty much everything everybody's recommended has helped even that much. Ibuprofen, you know, Tylenol, Aleve, all those kinds of products that are over the shelf, they don't help at all. I've never, they've never helped me. I, I don't know, my constitution is put together different or something, because I just, stuff like that just doesn't work. Enough on that. 
So today, I'm hoping to focus on this mandolin now, finally. What I'm planning to do, because this neck, I believe, is fairly crooked. So I'm going to throw this on here and see if you can tell if it's crooked. It's not horrible, but it's definitely crooked. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's, it's leaning. I'm exaggerating it. It's leaning this way towards the treble side. Um, trying to give you an idea of the difference. Um, it's probably, you know, out here in the extremes, it's probably a, almost a quarter inch difference. It's quite a bit different. And it seems like that's a consistent angle all the way. So when they took the neck out and put it back in, either they didn't get it right or it wasn't right from the factory and they just put it back exactly like it was. So it's fairly significant. I'm going to have to knock off about a full sixteenth of an inch off of this side or maybe even more possibly to get it level. It's a little hard to tell. You just you can only really do it by eye because there's I mean there's no good way to transfer that back to here but but if you you know if you have a decent eye you can look at this and tell that it's crooked you know. So anyway that's what I'm doing and and really a ruler like that is one of the best ways to tell is it, and I would encourage you the next time you change strings on your instrument, just do that and lay it on there, uh, especially if you have a flat fretboard. If you have a arched fretboard or a radius fretboard is the proper term that everybody likes to use, you know, it'll rock on there. But if you have a flat fretboard, you can lay it on there and then you can look and see uh, how your uh, fretboard is. You'll be surprised to find that on a lot of mandolins, it's crooked. It's not it's not that uncommon but this one's a pretty good amount so we're gonna work on that and the problem with that is that once I get that down I you know this is already low and that's not gonna help it that I, it won't really hurt it much but it's not gonna help it at all so that's probably gonna make it even a tiny bit lower so what I'm going to do then after I do that is I'm going to put this in a jig to try to determine the proper height of this, you know, here. And I have a, a jig that I use whenever I'm gluing a neck on. Well, I'm not going to use it for that purpose. I'm just going to lay it on there and then measure this height and see how much of a wedge I'm going to need to bring this height up to where it should be to give it a good high bridge because right now the bridge is very low and probably should be lower even because the action is very high up here. So I got a lot of work to do on this. You'll see all that in an upcoming video. I just wanted to show you that today and kind of give you my thought process and what I'm going to have to do. So I think that's going to be about it for today's vlog. Hope you enjoyed the little tips there about uh, checking the uh, flatness and angle of your neck. Now. One more thing about this, having a slight angle on a neck, as long as you've got enough height on your bridge, it, you know, doesn't hurt all that much. It's just that some folks really just have a problem with it. And me personally, it doesn't bother me that much. I mean, I could play this with this angle and it, I don't know that I'd really hardly notice it, you know, but, um, it is what it is, and some people just don't want to deal with that, so we'll flatten it out. Just thought I'd let you know that, so, so that if you do check yours and you find that it's a little bit of an angle, if it hasn't bothered you up to now, don't let it bother you just because you found that out. Because <laughs> you'll be surprised, a lot of them are that way. Well, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.